welcome to a new video in my home automation series and I received these two products uh, from Sonoff uh, uh, just a couple of days ago and these are special in a way that they are getting released on the 14th of uh, April and I'm hopefully I should have this video out on the 14th of April as well and they are marketed as Sonoff well, temperature and humidity uh, sorry uh, thermostats <laughs> but in fact they are you know a temperature and the humidity sensor well this one is the temperature and the humidity and this one is a temperature only sensor and of course you can set them up as a thermostat but but in reality they are more like any of the temperature and the humidity sensors that we have seen from sonoff so we have seen one which doesn't have a screen and also we have a new one which has a screen the only real difference is that these are ip65 rated you can see them both in here so ip65 ip65 which means that we can use them outdoors so they are designed to be outdoors they can be left to measure outside temperature and humidity uh, the rain can hit them so it's going to be fine and especially this model so this is both of them are as you can see snzb and 02 so 0 to just like the previous uh, temperature and humidity uh, sensor reading uh, devices. So the W, um, the w, so the WD model is this one, which you know has both of these readings, and then you have the LP model, LD model, which is this one, which only measures temperature, but it has this nice waterproof sensor, or you know sealed sensor. So these are ideal to be immersed in water so if you want to measure pool temperature you can use these and uh, if you have like a water pipe like a uh, metal water pipe you can you know secure it to the water pipe as well make sure it's not painted so you can conduct heat properly and then you can even measure you know temperature in like heating water temperature or you know whatever water temperature that is in a pipe and also in the marketing material, I've seen that these can be used, also used in places where, let's say, in brewing or fermentation, where you want to, you know, track your whatever liquid, if it's, you know, heated enough or it has the correct temperature for the fermentation process to start or maybe to finish. So these are the main uses of these devices. And in this video, I'm going to test them in the evening application using the NS Panel Pro as the Zigbee Hub and also on the iHost as a Zigbee Hub. And of course, they work in both systems. But as I said, if you really think about how these devices are different from any of the earlier temperature and humidity sensors. So for example, this is the 02P model. And we also had another one which had a screen. I reviewed both of them on my channel previously. They measure the same thing. So physically they measure the same characteristics of air, uh, temperature and humidity, but these are really sealed and they are designed to be used outdoors. And of course this has this different probe, which is ideal to measure water temperature. So that's the only difference between these models and some of the earlier temperature and humidity sensors. But then the good news is that they behave exactly the same. They have the same features. So I'm not really going to show you anything new. The form factor, the biggest screen and the waterproofing is really the new stuff in these devices. So as part of the initial setup, let me actually do the sort of like the unboxing section of it. Although it's, uh, you know, it's pretty much unboxed already because uh, the only thing that you get in the box besides the, um, well, that was just a case. So there is a documentation and there is a, um, like um, these things and there is like a reset pin as well so i mean if you want to hang it you can put this lanyard on the top and yeah you can just hang it and the documentation is um it's just the normal stuff on you know how you install and uh yeah you can read the qr code and that's how you get the battery out or something like oh no that's that's uh, that's what you need the pin for and uh yeah how you can mount it uh, anything else on the other side? No, nothing really. Nothing interesting. And it's pretty much the same on the uh, on the other one. So I get the same accessory, and um, yeah, it's nice. So let me try to open this one up. And first of all, I'm just going to remove this cover. Yeah. So this can go on there, and I should have oh 
I have a coin here, but I think this is a very fat coin, so that's not going to fit. So do I have something? I think I have a screwdriver, so that should do for the time being. Um, and I'm going to undo this. Yeah, so CR2477, so that's a very big fat cell. And I'm just going to remove it. I like this big, you know, this, I mean, it's very substantial. It just screws in. But again, it's it's probably for waterproofing. Um, I don't see any seal. Oh, there, oh, there is a seal. Yeah, so it's all the seal and everything. So um, I probably I could have used a bigger screwdriver because it was a biting into the surface a little bit. And we can already see that this is uh, trying to connect. Actually, let me set up my uh, NS Panel Pro. So add device and then start pairing. And in the meantime, I'm just going to do the flippy thingy here. And, oh yeah, it's already found. TH sensor it says, and then remove this one. Push the battery on. It's the same battery, it's the same case. I think they managed to reuse the moldings between these two products. I mean, it's really one product, but two different variants. And then, yeah, so you can't see, but if I tilt it a little bit, you can see that it says T and H sensor. So both of them appears as a T and H sensor. And I'm just going to finish. Yeah, and I can already see. So that's the 125. So temperature and humidity, and the other one already has temperature. And if I go, well, I would get a graph, but we just turn this on. So there is no graph yet. Okay, that's cool. And we have the two devices here. So you can see that it got automatically renamed to the part numbers or well, uh, product numbers. So the LD, that's the one here, which only has a temperature and the other one temperature and humidity. But I would think, yeah, so I mean, I, I think initially when I did the TZ video, I said they are called thermostats, but Essentially, this is like, you know, a temperature and humidity sensors in a different package. It has a nice big screen. It is waterproof, so it can be used outside. Or this one, this has this waterproof probe, which is ideal to measuring fluids. So as you can see, yeah, it's doing the temperature. I mean, it. if I go out and I look at another temperature and humidity sensor, you know, exactly the same user interface. Of course, we don't get the history here because we just turn this guy on. But yeah, that's the history. And that would be a graph for both the temperature and the humidity. So that's this one, the WD and the LD. It's here, you know, just a smaller user interface with uh, one reading only. Let me see how quick the update is. So I should be able to heat this up fairly easily. Yeah, okay. So maybe it it feels like that, oh no, it's like almost every 10 seconds we get a reading. I wouldn't expect anything more, to be honest. I mean, I guess in the scenarios that you would use these, you don't expect a lot of temperature changes and we would definitely want to um, you know, save battery power. So uh, I think this, you know, roughly 10 seconds is, you know, it's good enough. And that should probably update the graph as well. I don't think I'm going to get much in the settings. Yeah, RSSID, sorry, RSSI single strength. I mean, this zero dBm is probably, it's not updated yet. And it is on the latest version. And yeah, location share, you can change the temperature unit and you can do calibration. So you can change the temperature value if you think that this is wrong. So you can plus and minus it. And that's pretty much it. Is there anything else on the other device? I don't expect anything to be. So, oops, no, yeah, I know the dishwasher is finished. So, um, I get um, the same things, temperature and humidity. Did I select the same unit? I think I did, but again, it, yeah, it is virtually the same. There's nothing, there is no settings, there's no, you know, anything difference between the two. 
and if I go to scenes, let me just check the scenes as well. Obviously, this is not going to do anything, so there is no point looking at what it can do in the action side. It's only on the uh, uh, on the triggers. So uh, smart device, this guy, and yeah, I can set stuff up on temperature, humidity. Um, yeah, you can see that you can set a delay action as well, and you can have one when the device goes offline. Yeah, that's good. And the other one obviously only has temperature, but then it also has this delay action and the device offline. So if the temperature goes above, let's say, 30 degrees and delay action, let's say that if this measurement uh, persists for, let's say, one minute, then only send an alarm. Yeah, makes sense. So the setup is really easy uh, and the use of it doesn't really differ from any other temperature and humidity sensors. Uh, I'll, let's say zigbee ones at least that we have seen in the past in the meanwhile i took my eye host out as you can see it's up and running it has this green uh, sorry blue thing and first i'm going to remove them from my evilink account so delete device so that would remove it from the ns panel pro and actually i'm just checking if the um you know the signal the signal 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 will start blinking because that just means that it is ready to be paired again to something else. But it's not really blinking. But still, we are going to test um, the NS Panel Pro. Sorry, the iHost. And add device. And start the setup. Okay. It has gone into pairing mode. And it doesn't really look like that it's doing the thing. So I think, uh, because usually, I mean, it finds the device by now. So I think what I'm going to do is I will uh, take this pin out and check the documentation how to reset it. So let me change the view back to the, uh, to the desk. And look at the documentation so it looks like that i need to remove the lid and then there is going to be a thing for the pin so let me just do that where is my screw uh, it's here yep you see the black thing one two three four five Yep. Yeah, and it's uh, the first one is visible already. So let me just quickly do this because I think the uh, the pairing is going to finish in. Well, I still have almost a minute left. I mean, I was looking for this hole somewhere on the outside, but I realized that these are IP65 rated. So obviously there should not be opening anywhere where water could get in. And you can see the two devices here. So, um, okay, that's good. Let's quit, stop, and go back to the devices and they are here. Now they are showing that they are end device. I mean, obviously they are battery powered, so they can't really be routers. And let's look at the first one. Yeah, so we have a battery percentage and then we have uh, a temperature value. Oh, and then we also have this update thing. And that's going to be the, uh, the graph that gets uh, populated by time. And also here you can change them by month and then half a year. So that would be, that would show you monthly figures and that would show you daily figures and for both of uh, and and in all cases uh, um, well in both cases there's going to be a mid and a low sorry a high and a low so you can see what was the highest and the lowest for that particular day and you can also download it uh yeah <laughs> this is no history whatsoever do i have history actually let me check okay yeah we don't have with date and time and temperature celsius 
So that's how the data extract is going to look like. Um, yeah, it's good. Let's look at the other one. Very similar, but we have two readings. So we have a temperature and the humidity and the battery percentage. And uh, yeah, we have the graph as well here, but now we have two graphs. And in the settings, do we see anything? Yeah, so we still can change the temperature, sorry, the, um, uh, the value. And then, hmm. Okay, so we don't have a button on the back and I can see this picture is the picture of the, you know, the normal zero two, which has the small display. I mean, that obviously has a physical button. We don't have a physical button here. So all I can think of it's you have to press the same button that we did just for the reset in order to, uh, to reset this. So I'm just not going to take out the cover, but uh, yeah, that's how you can change the, um, the temperature. I think, uh, sorry, the, um, the, the, the unit from temperature to Celsius, uh, sorry, from Fahrenheit to Celsius or the, way, uh, or the other way around. And that's just uh, so you wake up the device so it can, you know, the changes can be sent to the device. So yeah, makes sense. And then we have the calibration. We have temperature calibration and uh, I always click X. And we also have the humidity cal uh, calibration. Did we see the humidity cal calibration in the EVLink application? I mean, we must have, there is no way that they wouldn't have put the same functionality into uh, the uh, EVLink and, you know, just to only put it in iHost. So, yeah, everything is here. Uh, it's nothing, you know, nothing special. And of course, I can go into the, um, you know, the cast, uh, sorry, not the cast screen but into scenes and add scene and the functionality is going to be the same here. So smart devices. And now we have these two guys here. And you can set something on temperature and humidity. We don't have the delay function here. And uh, for the other one, it's only temperature. And I realized something that I forget to show you is how I, you can use it actually as a thermostat, which I should have shown you when we were in the evening application, but I forgot. But let's say if I want to configure the, um, um, where is it? NS panel, NS panel, pro NS panel. So you can call, you can create a new th thermostat. And then here you see temperature and humidity sensor. So that's my older Zigbee temperature and humidity sensor. So again, if I have done this five minutes ago, when these two devices were still assigned to the NS Panel Pro, you would see these two devices showing up here. So you could select, let's say temperature and humidity. I mean, of course it would be a different, it would have a different name and you can create a thermostat. So let's say it's a heater thermostat and you have to also pick the uh, action device. And that would create the temperature thermostat or the thermostat. So this is now will be based on the value which is coming from the sensor. And then you can, you know, set it to manual mode and oops. Oh, the action device is offline. This is why I cannot say it. Mm, I mean, most of my devices are offline at the moment, but yeah. So once it goes online, then the, the wheel is going to be av uh, available and you can set the set temperature here on the screen. So that's how you would use in a thermostat, but it doesn't make these a thermostat th themselves by default, but you need to set them up as a thermostat. Okay, so I think that pretty much concludes my review video of these new devices. And I thought I'm just going to use the time where I talk about this, where I poof, go through this monologue to install this. Is it called the Lanyard? I never, I'm never really sure how to pronounce these in English. Anyway. So you can have these and then you can put it on a nail on the wall and then, then you have an external temperature and humidity sensor. It's so easy to use. So anyway, if you are interested in any of these guys, you will find the link in the video description. As I said, it goes on sale on 14th of April and they are going to be 1990 USD on IT website. Don't ask me how much it's going to be in various countries uh, and then, you know, local shops and, you know, because we have tariffs all around, but that's the price that you can get from IT directly. Okay, so I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next one.